read the tea leaves, so to speak, for us here. Are we really, really close to an interim deal with China? I think we're close. I think it's very important, though, that um, the December 15 tariffs do not go into effect because that's going to have a very chilling effect on the Chinese leadership. Mm -hmm. It's going to strengthen the hardliners in China. So it's very important that we not increase tariffs on, on December 15th. Now, if we do not, if there is agreement, then lots of questions come up. Number one, how big of a deal is it? Number two, you know, it's all, the details are always in the fine print. One doesn't know how this is going to be interpreted. Yeah, yeah. And add to that, we have to remember as Americans that there's no international tribunal, there's no independent judiciary to decide whether or not each party is living up to its end of the deal. So it's really up to China, it's up to the United States. And one final point here, yeah. frankly, is as it's reported in the press, it puts a lot of pressure on China because basically it's the U.S. that's calling the shots. If the U.S. will decide whether to, quote, snap back and increase those tariffs, depending upon whether the U.S. thinks China's living up to its end of the deal. Well, that's a key element. There was a report, Bloomberg reported today, that the United States may be proposing not just suspending the, 50, the December 15 tariffs, but actually cutting by 50 percent right. tariffs on like $350 billion exactly. worth of goods, right. but with the understanding that we can put it right back, as you say, snap back at any time, right. if we think you're not, in our judgment, I guess, yes. that's in right. complying with this. Right. Is that an effective way to deal with the Chinese? Because there has been questions in the past whether the Chinese really followed through on their agreements. Well, there, there's clearly been that question. When I served as ambassador to China, um, I, I ran into that a lot. The China will say something, sounds good, they'll write it down on paper, but don't really follow through. Something else to remember here, though, there's a kind of a disconnect, I think, between the people in China and the Chinese government, or maybe even the American people and the American government. Chinese people, I go to China often, I, just talk, I talk almost daily to my Chinese friends, Chinese people like Americans. They like American values. They look up to American values. They just know that in their country, their system, they've got to live under what they have. It's okay. They're making money. They're doing okay. They're, they're, they're raising their family and so forth. But Chinese people like American people. And I think we should always keep that in mind, not get too wrapped around the axle about the governments going back and forth fighting each other. Yeah, I'm sure that's right. The people are critical. At the same time, we have two leaders who seem to have pretty strong egos, and President Xi and President that. Trump. I would say that. Both of them I, I seem to feel that they need to come out of this saying, we, I won. Yeah. Is that possible? Can we do something that says uh, President Trump can come to the United States and look at, look at what I got for us, and President Xi can say, I didn't give up that much, or I didn't give up our sovereignty, or I didn't give up our power, our status? Well, saving the face is important, both to President Trump and to President Xi. But I, there's no doubt in my mind, if we kind of split the baby, then wrap it around a nice big bow of red, you know, ribbon, and it's going to then be uh, able to uh, be presented by each president as okay. And basically, the good part there is that'll help stabilize markets. That'll get rid of some of the unpredictability, and that's very important.